Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about something called correlation, which is another method of determining the relative age of different rock outcrops by comparing them uh, and looking at different patterns in how they were formed. When we're comparing fossils, for example, from different locations, they can exist in different types of rock, which means they could have existed in totally different depositional environments. That can tell us a huge amount of information about what the conditions were like at the time when that rock was formed. So again, we're going to be looking at a lot of puzzle-like scenarios today in an attempt to piece together the geologic history of different places. Here are some really important terms for today. An index fossil is one that can accurately put an age on the rock that it exists in. Index fossils are fossils of organisms that are A, really, really easy to identify, so they stick out, B, geographically widespread, so they were located in lots of different places on Earth, and C, they were only around for a short amount of time. So if you spot one, they're easy to spot, and you know about what time frame that rock was formed in. The next definition is something very similar. It's called a key bed. A key bed is some sort of layer of sediment. For example, uh, sediment from a known volcanic eruption or debris from a known meteorite where you know the age of that particular sediment that becomes part of the rock strata. And it has to happen over a wide geographic area. So if you're looking at rocks in different parts of the world and you see this particular key bed, you know exactly how old that rock is. In this example, we can see a bunch of layers of horizontal sedimentary rock. And in each of these sedimentary rocks, there's an index fossil. The index fossils have been given a letter. And there's also a key bed, which is an ash layer. And let's say we know the date at which this ash layer was deposited. Now what we're going to do is list these fossils, these layers, from oldest to youngest. One of the things I like to do when I'm analyzing something like this is I like to draw some straight lines just to connect the different layers. So layer U goes from here to here. However, between layer U and O in this strata, there was obviously some sort of erosion because I can tell layer T was completely eliminated in strata number one. Here's layer O, here's my ash layer, and this allows me to identify the different ages for each of the different strata which is telling me that our oldest layer is X, followed by the ash layer, followed by layer O, T is the next oldest layer, followed by U, and then finally our youngest layer is V. Here's another example. In this case, I've got even more layers that I need to do some correlation, and then I'm gonna list the layers from oldest to youngest. So again, I'm gonna take out my line tool And I'm going to match up some layers from the left strata to the right strata. So layer O is the same on the left and the right. But right away, I can see that there's an erosional layer between O and Z that is basically eliminated N and M. Z exists in both strata. Now there's an erosional layer here, which means there's some information missing. And I can see that information is actually this sediment layer S. T exists in both, U exists in both, H exists in both, but this is telling me that layer P has been eroded away over here. And finally, layer J is the last thing I can see at the top of this strata, which tells me Y is the oldest, followed by O, M, N, Z, S, T, U, P, H, J, and finally F. Now here's a tougher one. Try this one on your own first and then come back and compare the answers. Hint, this one actually sort of spells a word or a couple words. Now in this example, I'm gonna start by trying to find some layers that are similar between adjacent rock layers. And again, I'm just gonna connect some lines.
So now that I've connected some lines, I have a better picture of what's oldest all the way to what's youngest. Starting at the bottom, I've got S. S is gonna be my oldest layer, followed by U. C has been eroded over here, but that's my next oldest layer, followed by H. G has been eroded, that's, but that's my next oldest layer. R, E, now I have to look over here to figure out what comes after E, because it's been eroded up here. After E, I have A, T, which starts me back on this strata. J, something's missing here, that's O. B, next up, K, I, and D. So yes, it awkwardly spells something. Such great job, kid, aw. Now what we've got at the bottom are four outcrop diagrams. This time they have some pattern labels that represent different types of rock. We're gonna determine the relative age sequence of the rock and actually color them in to this diagram here. So this will be our youngest layer. This will be our oldest layer here. And here are our rock outcrops. We've got some gneiss, some schist, granite, basalt, conglomerate, shale, limestone, and sandstone. So definitely try this one out on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing some lines between all of these different layers because that's gonna help me piece together the history of this uh, section of strata. Notice in this case that any of the erosional regions aren't shown. So you have to infer that on your own this time. Okay, so based on what I have so far, I can tell that my oldest layer has to be this granite because nothing comes below it in any of my strata. So that means the bottom layer, the oldest, has got to be granite. Now above granite, it's got to be the gneiss. Now there's been some erosion in several of these layers above the gneiss. So here I've got schist above gneiss, here I've got basalt above gneiss, here I've got conglomerate above gneiss, but here I've got conglomerate above schist. So it's clear that there should be schist here above the gneiss. It's just been eroded away. Same thing here, the schist has been eroded away. Here's the schist where it should be. The gneiss would have been down here, I just can't see it in this strata. So after gneiss should be schist. Above the schist, I should have conglomerate. Now, next up, what comes after conglomerate? Well, I've got a couple of options. I have sandstone above conglomerate. I've got sandstone above conglomerate here. And here I have some basalt. But notice that I can tell the sandstone has just been eroded away between these layers here. Therefore, right above the conglomerate, I should have sandstone. And then right above the sandstone, I should have basalt. Okay, next up, what goes above basalt? In this diagram, limestone is right above basalt. Here, limestone is right above basalt. Here, I've got shale above basalt, but I can see through my diagram that that's only because the limestone has been eroded away in between these layers. So above basalt, I should have limestone. And that leaves only one, the very top layer, which is shale. So this is what the strata should look like. 